grateful for your time once again. Daily Graphic this morning uh, stays on the One Village Rwanda initiative. I will investigate reports of short works. The president, uh, the, the reports of some... Uh, and to the Ghanaian people, um, let me start by saying that um, yesterday I joined the Deputy Minister of Sports, Honorable Perry Okujato, to the presidency to have a tete-a-tete, -tete, or if you like, um, a conversation with the Black Stars. And um, one of the profound statements that the president made, which I think we should share to the people of Ghana, was that they are a team, and for that matter, going to Egypt means that they are not going to represent their individual mm. um, perspectives. They are going to represent Ghana. Um, they might have their individual political perspective. They might have their religious uh, backgrounds, but it doesn't mean that that should prevail um, if you like, ahead of the um, nationalistic perspective, and for that matter, um, they should go and bring the cup to Ghana. Again, we all know about the WWE champion, um, Kofi Kingston, who also visited Ghana for mm. the first time, or let me say, um, for about 13 years that he left um, Ghana. And so he came to uh, meet the president, and the president was, was so happy. He represented the people of Ghana and welcomed him to Ghana and congratulated him for. Um, such as such as that he has been able to chalk. With the One Village, One Dam saga, mm. indeed, as the minister said, dugout is different from a dam. What the government seeks to do actually is that the dugout is supposed to be a chamber or the central part of the dam itself. People, especially in the NDC, seem to be torn apart with the implementation of this policy, basically because of its impact on the Ghanaian public, especially those in the northern region. I have personally had some experiences, or if you like, some reports from people in the northern region saying that there have been instances, like, um, instances that contractors uses their excavators to dig sand mm. from places to be able to carry on with their work. When these pits are filled with water during the dry season, it is very, very important or it is useful to the people out there. And so the issue or the discussion really is not about whether it's a dugout or it's a dam. The youthfulness of it is what is important to the Ghanaian people. And I'm happy that the president is saying that he is going to investigate the allegations or reports mm. of a shoddy work that is being done. That is not true. It is not true because when you go to the Upper East region today, the number of dams that is being contrasted there is about 70 dams. It is only one, that is the Kajelo one, that is having a problem. You know, when the dams are being constructed, what is done is that there are spillways that are constructed as part of the dams so that when there are excesses of the water during the raining season, mm. the spillway will be able to give way for the excess water to also, I mean, leave the, the, the dams. So what is going to happen is that when the excess water leaves the dam, or if you like, the spillway is not constructed at the time that the construction was happening, or the fatal incidents actually happened. Mm. What it means is that it is, it is, it is not going to be um, 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 possible for the contractor or for government to be able to deal with the matter at that time. So the incident happened at a situation whereby the spillway had not been constructed. And that is why we are having that peculiar incident in the Upper East region, that is Kajelo, in the um, Kastan and Kana district. What government is doing is to make sure that we provide water in an all dry season for the people of the Northern region. Because we know that in 2016 when the president at the time that he was a candidate, visited the people of the northern region. Mm. When the people were telling President Anadu Danko Kufado that these are the things that we need in the northern region to make us happy, or when the president asked them, what do you want? They told him that we need water, number one, we need water, number two, and we need water, which shows that issues of water, especially in the dry season, is very, very important to the people of the northern region. And so we are committed as a government to providing the one village, one dam, mm -hmm. that is about 100, uh, 570 that we want to provide to the people of Ghana in this country. And so we are committed to that particular cause. Alaji, 
Um, I'm sure you have heard of the report and uh, the reactions and uh, some contractors suggesting that well they have done what uh, has to be done. Uh, there have been reports that some have done short work and yet have been paid. Uh, is it that we are not paying enough attention or the, the project is facing challenges? Well, um, thank you very much once again, Bright, for the opportunity to be here. Let me say good morning to my uh, colleague and also good morning to uh, our cherished viewers uh, out there and especially a very good morning to the good people of the Tamale North constituency. Right. What did the president say they will do? Investigate, will investigate. the reports of Shoddy Works. You see... I think that the dishonesty and the cluelessness of the government that we have in power is making all politicians look very bad. And you see, the more we serve the people more of such level of dishonesty, the more we endanger politics. And once politics is endangered, our democracy will also be in danger. And for me, it is only the good people of Ghana who can arrest that level of dishonesty that we are seeing. Right. I speak of dishonesty because many of the things that this government promised when they were in opposition have either not been done or when even there is an attempt to do it, mm. what you have is completely unlike what was promised. My brother here talks about the usage of the dam being important mm. and likened it to how even contractors, when they dig pits, pits and finish their work and water is collected, is useful. Right. Was that the promise that the good people of Ghana were made in relation to these dams? The good people of Ghana were told how dams will be constructed to be used for irrigation purposes. That was a promise. Let's not forget that. Dams for irrigation purposes. So that the people in the local communities mm. will not have to do seasonal farming, can make their own money, and even if they want to buy cars for their chiefs, they'll buy for their chiefs, and the chiefs will buy them themselves. That was a promise, right? And we in the NDC, first when there was no attempt to even construct the dams, raise issues with it. Maybe that stampeded the government to make the effort. And when they started, we raised the concerns and they said, we're doing politics. They said it was skin pain. We said, we are doing dugouts. Some of them are even a threat to the lives of the people. And now we are told that some people have actually lost their lives in their communities as a result of the shoddy work that has been done in these communities. Right in my constituency, we had an existing dam in Fo left there last when uh, I mean yesterday. I get visitations from the people, and they tell me how. The dam has dried up for the first time since Adam, because they came to the community and met the dam. But for the first time, it has dried up because of the shoddy work that was done. And how even during the process of the construction, they were making appeals to the contractor to do a better job. And the contractor told them the limits that he was given. There's another one at Puntalga. I went to Puntalga last Sunday. The chief asked for me to be taken to the site to see the shoddy work. And the chief was so thankful because they had 
a smaller dam that was constructed for them some time ago. And that when the contractors came, they offered to shut that dam so that they could use that site to construct a bigger one. And that he resisted and asked them to leave that small dam and do a new one. And thanks be to his God, they would have been in bad business if they had allowed them to you know, seal the smaller dam that they have been depending on. Because the work that they have done is useless. It's not useful to them. The chief told me this, Ben Talaga, last Sunday. So what my brother says is one, one, one. Let's man up and be honest. Okay, that first of all, yes, that first of all, we lied because the, the, the dugouts we are providing are not the irrigation dams that we promised. <laughs> and then also perhaps tell us, like the president is telling us, that you'll investigate to find out the shoddy work that is being done and corrected. But unfortunately, Bright, what will come out of that investigation? Sincerely, what will come out of it? The president assured us of bust investigation. What came out of it? Do we know? He assured us of Australia visa scandal investigation. Do we know what happened? He assured us of Ayawasu Wagon. A commission report has been prepared. We in the minority are requesting for the report. The information minister yesterday told us they will not release it. They are not, they are not you know, mandated to release yeah, it. Yeah, six months to, re to, to release the report. Yeah, I mean, basically telling us that just like the Australian and Bost are there, they won't release it. The Kumasi seven who were murdered, the Minister of Information at the time told us investigations weren't going. What has come out of it? The President told us they were investigating. What has come out of it? The Ghana Cylinder. And many of those investigations that we have been promised, they will carry out and make, you know, uh, 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 recommendations that will be appeasing to all of us. Have not seen the light of day. And that adds on to the dishonesty. Oh, we will investigate it. Then we all go to sleep and they move on. Business as usual. That's what I'm saying. The level of dishonesty and the cluelessness of this government is making all politicians look very bad indeed. Okay, I'll come back to you. Vincent, so, I mean, he's not too sure, I mean, that this investigation will lead to anywhere. Well, um, I, I really don't see why it should get to that level. But before um, I respond to that, let mm. me try to respond to one of the things that he said. He made mention of the fact that the dams that is being constructed by the government are dams that are deceitful. These are not the things that we told the people of Ghana, especially during the 2016 elections. I think there is some kind of misunderstanding on the part of the NDC as to what we promised the people of Ghana. We promised the people of Ghana to bring up our dams that are supposed to assist the indigenous people, especially in the northern region, as far as farming seasons are concerned mm. and for livestock rearing. You and I know that there are categories of dams you can talk of um, earth dams, you can talk of concrete dams, you can talk of large-scale agricultural dams. What the government decided to do for the people of the northern region are the earth dams, that is small earth dams. I initially indicated... The, what we call the dugout. As, not the dugout. These not are the dugout. dams. They are earth dams. Okay. These are supposed to be situated on the two hectares of land. It cannot be a dugout. You cannot have a dugout on two hectares of land. Indeed, that is why I initially said that the dams that we are building is synonymous to a chamber and hall. The dugout is found in the central compression of the dam itself, about 80 by 50. Today, if you want to go and buy a land, I'm sure it used to be about 100 by 100. Now it's about 80 by 50 or 80 by 70, depending on the area. So if we are using 80 by 50 to bring out a deeper compression in the dams that we are constructing, mm. The definition of the dams cannot be dug out. In fact, he said that in his own constituency, there was a dam in his constituency. What was the state? And how can that dam be defined 
for him to call it a dam. So if those dugouts in his constituency, as he is referring to, are now dams, why is it that now government is building about two hectares of dams, adding dugouts in it, and people are saying that these are the, um, the deceitful dams that we are building for, for, for the people of the northern region, and, and these are not the things that we promised the people of Ghana. See, when you go to the northern region, they are so happy about what government is doing for them because for the 12 year, uh, for, for the 12-month period that we have in a year, it rains just about three months in the Northern For the nine months, it is so dry. I have lived in Yendi before for almost a year. And trust me, when some of the livestock even goes in search of water in the dry season, they never come back. And these are some of the changes that we are making in the lives of the Ghanaian people in the northern regions. As part of the project, what the Ministry of Special Development and Initiative is doing is that even before the commencement of the project, there have been sensitization with the communities. Because these are not the normal dams that we find in the various communities. And for that matter, they need to be sensitized to be able to ensure safety precautions in the communities. Whilst we are also engaging, or whilst we also engage the contractors to also ensure the safety precautions that have been given to them. The instances that he gave, that in some constituencies or some, in some um, areas in these constituencies, mm. there are serious damages and people have died. These are allegations that he has made, and that is why the president is saying that he is going to make or he's going to ensure that there are investigations to it. I am aware that it is only Kajelo Dam. That, because of the fact that we have not completed mm. the dam itself, and when you look at the dams, spillways are supposed to be part of it, as I initially indicated. If the spillways are not available, it means that when there are excesses, there is going to be a problem. But because we have not completed the construction, that is why we are having that fatality in the um, um, east, um, upper east region. So it is not true that the people of the northern region are complaining about the construction of the dams that the government is building for them because these are requests that were made by the people themselves mm. through the representative that is their chiefs to the government when the campaign was ongoing in 2016. So it cannot be true that the people of the northern region are not happy about the dams that, that is being constructed in the um, upper east region, if you like the three northern regions. One thing that I want to assure the people of Ghana, that when the president said that he is going to ensure that there are investigations that are being carried out as far as these reports are concerned. He means it. He means it because when the issue of Asenso and the Abuja-Napo issue came, when he said he was going to investigate it, did he investigate it or not? <laughs> did he or did he not? Surprise. No, Bryce, I'm asking, did he or oh, did no, he you not? Go, go ahead. Uh, I'll put so, out that question so, to Aladdin. So, so there are a lot of instances mm. that the president has shown that when he says that he's going to cause investigations into issues that are public interest, he is going to deal with. I am saying it once again, that this policy, that is the one village, one dam, seem to be tearing the NDC apart in the northern region. And any attempt to, or to, to make the policy look bad or to paint the policy uh, black to the people of northern region will not wash. You know, Alagi, he says the president is committed to <laughs> investigations. That's what he said. I, I, uh, he, he, he is bold indeed. He is very bold to have even mentioned the so-called investigation that was conducted in the case of the allegations A plus made against the two deputy chief of staffs. I think that the best person to answer his, his question that he posed to you mm. will be A plus. And maybe Mrs. Tiwa Adudankwa, who got a promotion after the so-called investigation. No, 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 those allegations were made against Asenso in I'm saying and that I'm saying that somebody, were there some, an investigation somebody, against somebody, yes, please. Was there a release please, of the investigation please, report? Please, again, please, yes. Please, somebody made an allegation. Mm. The person took part in the investigation. You and I, courtesy Dr. Baumia, mm. were not there. <laughs> the person who took part in the so-called investigation mm. can best answer. And he has answered, if you have been listening, about that so-called investigation by even releasing a recorded conversation that he had 
with that Mrs. Tiwa at the damn the investigations. I'm saying that. That was the aftermath. And what, the what was contained in that? No, we should put it in Please, please. You say I didn't interject. Okay, but, yeah, but you see, yeah, I allowed yeah, you yeah, a little you, you interjection. Yes. But the point has to be made mm. that there was a leaked conversation. And in that conversation, we were told the nature of the investigation he's referring to. And it, it, I mean, it hasn't been, you know, uh, 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 put aside by the CID boss who eventually, at the time, was not the boss, but eventually became the boss, only confirming perhaps what was in the tape, her desire to make the president look good. That was in the tape, to cover up. So I'm, I'm surprised that he's so bold to use that as but, an but, example. But you listened but, to but you please. when he said that the tape was doctored? Uh, please, please, please. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, you allow <laughs> and, 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 and interestingly, you. interestingly, like you, you interestingly she's not under investigation. A plus is not under investigation, but the party <laughs> chairman of the MPP, I um, mean, NDC, is under investigation for for saying leak tape. But you, you are a bold person <laughs> in the areas that you are going. You okay, are a very bold person. On. But let's move on. You see, he talks about the promise, and I just want to read what the president said in 2016 when he was flag bearer of the MPP. Flag bearer of the MPP, Nana Kufuadu, has revealed his intention to build a dam in every village in the northern region should he be voted president in the December elections. Nanado believes that these dams will serve as irrigation platforms to boost agriculture in the rural zones of Ghana. According to him, this measure will see Ghana capable of feeding West Africa. Two sources there. I mean, that's uh, uh, at Ghana Web. Okay. Now, this was what he said. So, definitions of dams, concrete dams, whatever dams, the purpose it was supposed to serve was defined by the president. So, we are not supposed to get into definitions of dams this morning. Are the things you call dams that you are doing in the northern region accompanied by what is supposed to make them irrigation dams? Do we have the pipes that are supposed to be laid? Are farmers really farming around there to export to West Africa? That is the dishonesty and the deception that I'm talking about. That is started in opposition and has been carried on in government. And then he says, oh, they have done dams and they have done dugouts. Right. Maybe he hasn't been listening to the news. Yesterday, one of the contractors was on another radio station. Mr. Yakubu, he was called. He said they were giving contracts to dig dugouts. I'm not a contractor. I'm not one of them. He's a contractor. That's he the said, upper East Ridge. Yes, yes. Right. And that he has okay. done one or two when he's left with one. That they were giving contracts to dig dugouts. And so if the people are complaining, that's what they were giving contracts to do. And when he sits here and thinks that he can fool the people of Ghana once again, I making it look like NDC is disturbed by a so-called success, again, I think he hasn't been listening to the news. Why did the president say he will investigate it? Because the allegations. No, because the chiefs from the Upper East region called on him. But are they not allegations? And the chiefs came to make allegations to him? But are they not allegations? And because the chiefs are NDC if, people who are uncomfortable with nobody, your success? Nobody said that. I am saying that there are allegations that have been made, and the president is saying that he is going to see, an investigation into you it. See, you okay, see, you, Allah, Allah you see, you can, to, to you, can, you, can, you, can, you can continue to tickle yourself. But the truth of the matter is that the community, in fact, I have a video right here. Mm? Right. If you permit me, I'll send it to you to play. Mm -hmm. The Pentalaga MPP chairman was complaining about the dam and recorded on video. I have Another it here. Allegation. Oh, I have it here. Another allegation. I can give it to you. You can, you can, you can choose. It's you you think that if you make it, if you say it's an allegation, then it ends there. That is the dishonesty I'm speaking about. But he's not here to defend himself. I have his video here. I have his picture and people know him. I can give it to you to play. Because it's my constituency. And I, I visit my constituency. I'm with the okay. people. I like to wrap up from And so, you see, you can, you, can, you, can, you can pretend and tickle yourself and say it is the NDC people who are disturbed about it. But the verdict is out there that the people feel deceived. And I'm saying if we do not arrest and stop this dishonesty and level of cluelessness that the NPP seems to be showing in government, we put all politicians in danger and by so doing our democracy. 
I'm grateful. I, before we talk about the food items exports, let's quickly bite on the flat issue. Uh, Finder has a story that suggests that uh, the World Bank is intervening with $200 million to deal with the flats. This is a well-known issue. I wouldn't want to uh, read a story, but we're told of that amount of money uh, coming in to support us deal with flat. If you take a look at the Daily Graphic editorial this morning, it says lip service won't deal with Accra flats. That's where we are. I, 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 is, it, is it that we're overwhelmed by uh, the, the, the amount of water we have to deal with, or what is it that we're not doing right to, to deal with Accra flats? But I think this issue is an issue that should concern every Ghanaian. Mm. It's not an issue that can or should be politicized. Every, as far as these flats are concerned, it is almost the case that every year we have people dying out of this, whether MPP or NDC. It happens. Mm. And so it behooves on us as Ghanaians to make sure that the role that we have to play we play them. The government also has a role to play, and that is why World Bank is also um, launching projects to be able to make sure it deals with the situation. I know of a project that is a Garrett um, that is being um, launched so as to deal with um, situations. The River in the, uh, right. absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And the Nima, the Abobloshi mm -hmm. areas, and what have you. So that in communities where they are low income, these communities would be able to know the challenges that comes with flats, or if you like, the difficulties that comes with flats in this country. And so if the Ghanaian people know the role that they are supposed to play, that you yourself are supposed to take pest safety precautions, that throwing rubbish or dirty things in the gutters will come back to hurt you or to hunt you, if we know as a people that these things are going to come and hurt us or hunt us, then we know that the people of Ghana are having a role to play. Government over the years have always been promising, governments upon government, about how to deal with the perennial situation of floods in this country. It, it, it seemed to be like where there is the political will, but the implementation seemed to be the problem. And that is why I'm saying that we need not politicize this issue. Mm. But I am happy that at least there is some aspect or some part of commitment on the part of this particular government by providing about 6 million Ghana cities in dealing with the issue of flats in this country. Today, when you go to a dry and tepa, there are works going on there to improve situations of flats, and government is about 70% um, finishing that um, project. When you go to um, Kumasi itself, there are projects like that. In fact, even in Accra here, there are projects like that where the finance ministry have also released um, quite a substantial amount of money to be able to deal with the situation. And so I want to call on Ghanaians that issues of last are situations whereby everybody needs to take safety precautions to be able to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I saw a picture of um, a policeman carrying people at his back, and I was so happy, I was so i um, glad to see uh, people also trying to make sure that people's lives are being saved in, in, in situations like that. And so everybody has a role to play uh, as far as the flats are concerned. Mm. I like it. So mm -hmm. the flats, I mean, Daily Guy's story, a uh, woman and a uh, child killed, and, and every year we seem to see that. He mentions implementation uh, uh, challenges. Is that it? Well, um, right, again, um, I find it very fascinating when my very good friends in the NPP have their backs against the wall when the people come knocking for the better leadership that they were promised. How they tend to sermonize about the need not to politicize certain things. What is politics? Politics is about choices. Politics is about decision making. Politics is about leadership. So, I mean, when you have wrong choices being made by leadership or decisions being made by leadership that do not serve the people well, 
and those decisions and choices are questioned, how is that supposed to be less important in a discussion that so far we are told has led to the loss of about six lives? And I'd like to send my condolences to the families. Painful as it is, and common as it has become, it is still unacceptable. And again, Bright, when you look at some of the things that are happening, I tend to think that the NPP in opposition said the battle was for the Lord and actually worked so hard. Unfortunately, in government, it seems they have left the battle to the Lord and we are all singing Osibisa. Heaven knows where we are going. That's what I see. Because you see, what he says, there is some level of truth to it. Our collective contribution to the state that we find ourselves. But that is why we choose leaders to deal with it. Our collective recklessness, our collective irresponsibility have led to the problems that we have. But over the years, we have always demanded that leadership show direction by dealing with these issues. Why should it be different now? Because the truth is that in greater Accra alone, we are told that we generate up to about 3,000 tons of filth a day. A day. Out of about 300,000. About 300 capacity to deal with 100,000. So ask yourself, where does the 200,000 tons go to a day? And that is the collective irresponsibility that I speak about. But that is why we choose leaders to deal with our collective irresponsibility. And over the years, we have always demanded that our leaders, you know, show us the way to deal with that. And that is why every year, even as we are unable to provide all the drains that will make flooding a thing of the past, we have always voted money, especially when the raining season is approaching, to carry out desilting in the various communities. The Minister for Works and Housing told us at the beginning of the year that about 200 million Ghana cities had been voted for desilting. The Sanitation Minister said about 197,000 Ghana cities, so within the same range. I don't know if it was also for her ministry and different, but we are talking about almost the same figure. So if we still have floods after these huge monies were voted, you can't tell me not to politicize it. You can't say it is not politics because it was the politics that allocated that resources. So it will only be fair to question if indeed the dredging and desilting has been done and if it has been done effectively and if it is not the reason if that was done, and it is not the reason why we have the floods that we had when we have not even entered the major raining season, then we look at how to deal with the other problems. But if indeed the money has been voted, either it has not been released or it has been released, but it has not been put to good use, then we will also find remedies. So I'm saying, that we need direction. We need leadership. We cannot always throw our hands in despair. It is not a problem that can be solved in a day, a year, or two. But we need to at least see that the leadership that we have is working towards the resolution of that problem. And the only way we can see that is when we have leadership like we had in the past, regularly desulting and dredging some of these drains 
that contribute to the floods. And also constructing roads, tunnels, and drains. In the process of the construction, you may still have the floods, but at least you see a direction mm. to deal with it. But when you don't find those constructions going on, you don't find the dredging. Because remember, uh, in the narration, I left out the fact that the mayor of Accra at a point lamented that they didn't have the capacity to do the silting this year. So I'm saying that when you don't see constructions going on to expand our drains, you know, to deal with the floods, you don't see the dredging, you don't see the desilting, then you can only sing Osibisa, heaven knows where we are going. <clears throat> Grateful. Let's touch on a final uh, issue before uh, we uh, move on. Uh, the finder this morning is suggesting that uh, Ghana exported 400 million cities worth of food items. 3.3 uh, .3 billion was generated at the farm gate. That's on the finder. Uh, Minister of Food and Agriculture, Mr. Uh, Wusu Fiyakutu revealed that Ghana exported 150,000 metric tons of food and it was worth 400 million to neighboring countries. So Togo, Cote d'Ivoire, Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, Benin, and Northern Nigeria. Uh, at the farm gate, uh, that's 3.3 uh, uh, billion cities uh, was generated. 667,000 farmers uh, who participated in the Planting for Food and Jobs Initiative uh, created 740,000 jobs in the rural economy under the flagship program. Uh, he also told us that uh, by 2023, Ghana will be uh, rice uh, self-sufficiency. Uh, Ghana, uh, the rice industry will be transformed and will ensure self-sufficiency by 2023. Uh, government, he said, is poised to increase domestic rice production uh, from what we have now. Good news. Uh, Vincent, rice uh, takes a lot of uh, foreign um, uh, uh, currency. The good news is that we are exporting food items. Uh, rice production is expected to see improvement by 2023. The planting for food and jobs is, is achieving results. Absolutely right. Um, if <coughs> you remember when we started the planting for food and jobs, and um, a typical example is where before the implementation of the planting for food and jobs, you realize that um, an acre of land that seedlings could give about seven bucks or five bucks. Mm. When we started implementing the planting of um, the plant of food and jobs, and now government decided to give improved seedlings to the people of Ghana, that is the farmers, uh, you could now realize that you will find the bags now increasing from the seven to about 14, 15. And even in some cases, I've seen reports whereby the farmers also say that now their acre can give them about 20 bags. And so clearly, it should tell you that the, 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 the introduction of the improved seedlings has actually um, increased the number of bags that we are able to get as far as maize as, uh, is concerned. When you also look at the rice importation mm -hmm. in a year, government imports about 650,000 metric tons of rice. That is worth about 1.5 billion. Right. And so it should tell you that um, when you change your currency to dollars to go and import um, rice to Ghana, it means that you are going to have depreciation of your city. For the whole year too, revenues from cocoa gives about 2 billion. So what it means is that when we get revenues from cocoa, we use it to import rice which is not good for the Ghanaian economy. Government is anticipating that by 2020, we should be able to increase... 2023. 2023. We should be able to increase the number of um, rice that we export outside. And so if we are able to um, give farmers improved seedlings so that now, instead of the 650,000 metric tons of rice that we import into this, this country, Ghana locally can produce 700,000. Mm -hmm. What it means is that we may not have to even import um, rice into this country. And so that is the anticipation of the, of the government in that regard. So issues of planting for food and job, I know is um, um, causing some, some good response for, for the people of Ghana because the improved seedlings have been able to give some amount of uh, relief to, to the farmers because 
ordinarily farmers who were using the old seedlings were going through difficulties. Some of them will not even get the yields that they expect. And so the improved seedlings was able to give the yields that they, um, they expect. In fact, even improve on the, on the yields. And that, that's the exact same thing you want to do for, for the rice um, um, importation. So if rice importation is, is going to be reduced or as it were, government want to eliminate the importation of rice by 2023. Mm -hmm. We expect that the city is now going to be robust because now we are not going to um, change the kind of currency that we use to go and import rice into this country. So if our city is going to be stabilized, we are going to have exportation. We, 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 we see or we, we, we think that it's going to bring about the, the stability of the economy that we so much um, desire. Would anybody be right in asking that, okay, if we're exporting these amount of uh, food items, then uh, uh, on the local front, would you see uh, the prices dropping? Well, uh, that is an argument that may be tenable. Mm -hmm. But it should also depend on the plans and the strategies that will be put in place by government. Because I'm not sure that it's going to be a strategy in vacuum whereby we are just thinking about the importation or if you like the exportation yes, too. But what government intends to do, which I know, that is not going to be a strategy in vacuum whereby we are just thinking about the exportation of the rice. We want to make sure that the local base where our farmers are growing rice will be protected. The local industries needs to be protected. If the local industry needs to be protected, the government is going to ensure that the stabilization of the city, the economy is stabilized, farmers are also protected, so as to make sure that we boost the economy of this country. Uh, we're exporting food. That should be good news for us. Yeah. Revenue. Indeed it is. I mean, um, it is something that we have to commend ourselves and especially our farmers for. Uh, and also, uh, you know, policy makers and decision makers over the period have, you know, uh, contributed immensely to the growth in agriculture. What I find sad sometimes is the you know, bad debts that you have, especially on the books of Agricultural Development Bank uh, when it comes to the support that government has been given to farmers. And when you go to the Agri Ministry as well, you will find out sadly that I think since uh, Champong, uh, the support that governments have been given to farmers sometimes or mostly uh, do not get the kind of, uh, 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 if you like, response that is expected. So an initiative is started, farmers are supported, and the anticipation is that uh, maybe they will pay back so that it becomes a revolving fund, so more farmers are supported. But you have many indebtedness on the books of Agric Bank and also in, uh, uh, you know, uh, at the Ministry of Agric. But as, as a country in general, we have been doing well, mm -hmm. you know, and somehow, uh, I like the uh, part of, you know, how self-sustainable, I mean, self-sufficient, you know, uh, we, 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 we are as far as, you know, uh, the production of food is concerned. I say we have been doing well because I, uh, this morning before I came, was looking at the exports. I mean, it's not new. It's not, it's not the first time that we are exporting food products. In 2016, for example, uh, in about uh, 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 64 countries that we exported uh, you know, food products to, Ghana made about $856,000. You know, that's an equivalent of about 4.2 million Ghana cities. And uh, in Malaysia alone, we exported to their tune and made about $200,000. In Netherlands, we exported and made about $395,000. In Brazil, we exported to, and made about $200,000. The US, uh, we made about $167,000. In Japan, we made about $150,000. And these are you know, statistics that you can find on the World Bank Group website when it comes to you know, how well we have been doing as far as food exports, product, food product export is concerned. So um, um, <laughs> it is very simplistic to assign this particular one to uh, uh, a recent government you know, uh, policy. Even though, yes, you cannot deny the fact that it may have contributed to you know, uh, whatever increase, if there's any, because I've not done the comparison to see if there's an increase. But it, it is possible that there will be an increase. And that is why it is important for us to understand that it has been a long sustaining 
uh, support, you know, by uh, 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 state actors in the area of agriculture. But what still remains relevant is how to make these food products cheap on the Ghanaian market. How to make them cheap. That is what is crucial. And that is what we need to deal with. We should not only be proud that we are exporting this much, we should also be happy that our people have so much on their tables for less. That is what should actually make us proud. Because today when you go to the market, I mean, almost everything that you used to buy have increased in prices, from onions to tomatoes to rice. They have all increased in prices. Maize, they have increased in prices. So people, when you tell them this, will uh, naturally want to know how such, you know, uh, success will reflect on the market the prices, market. you know. So I think we have to concern ourselves with that more and also uh, respect some of the uh, 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 international standards that are required of us. Because recently, I think we have had the agric minister banning the exportation of leafy uh, vegetables. vegetables. Mm -hmm. And I hear parliament is uh, intending to bring the minister to the house to explain to us what went wrong. Uh, before this ban was uh, put in place. But we can still do more. Ghana has the capacity to feed the whole of West Africa. And if we get our policies right, if as farmers we are honest and take the support and actually put it to the intended use, and government also have the structures to support us, actually put it to the use that it's supposed to be uh, uh, put to, we as a country will be better uh, uh, for it. But again, you have to understand, just by way of wrap-up, you have to understand that some of these things will also meet opposition. For example, you have importers of rice, you have importers mm -hmm. of, of meat products who are threatened by the local growth. And so, these, uh, yes, uh, yes, okay. yes. So as you support local uh, growth, you need to understand that you will have opposition from other people whose livelihoods depend on the importation, but, but, importation but of these goods and, and it take surprising care that of you it. don't want to give this success to the government of um, Ghana. It's surprising that you want to play politics no, with I, this I, one. I, no, I'm not playing politics because, <laughs> because you, know, you know the agricultural figures in 2016, 2015. You know the agricultural figures. I, I, I'm saying that I'm surprised you are <laughs> you playing know, politics you know with this one. You know the industry figure at the time. Even that is why I say I find it very, very, that's not true. That's not true. It will agree with that in negative. The Friday morning is done. And I'm glad we'll take some rest Thank you so much. Thank you very 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 much. NPP. Uh, Honorable Suhini uh, is the MP for Tamale North, a member of the NDC. Grateful for your Friday morning. Thank you so much. Right, stay with sports. Start next.